So they give us a diagram here, and they give us this given that angle six is congruent to angle seven, and that we wanna prove that angle five is congruent to angle eight. So first things first, the givens, you wanna think of those as clues or hints, okay? So they give us that clue or hint to help us along uh, so that we can then go ahead and prove this. If we didn't have any information whatsoever, we wouldn't have anything to go on, and we wouldn't have a starting point. But again, think of the givens as clues or hints. And what I like to do is I like to jump into the diagram, okay, and mark it up so that I kind of see you know, how this is gonna all play out. So angle six is congruent to angle seven, so I'm gonna actually mark these with the same marking so that when I see it, you know, visually I can just know right away that they're equal without having to read it or remember it in my mind. Okay, so that's a good suggestion is to mark the diagram. The second thing that I do is I try to figure out how I'm gonna prove this using the diagram before I even get into the two columns over here on the left. And let's take a look here, well it looks like uh, we don't know that you know lines L and M, we don't know if they're parallel or not, okay? But in this particular proof, there's different ways to do it. And uh, the way we're gonna do it here, I think, is that we can see that five and six, see how those angles are right across from each other, those two intersecting lines? They form two pairs of vertical angles. So the angles that are across from uh, each other, when two lines intersect like that, those are called vertical angles and they're congruent to each other. So we know that five is congruent to six, and then we also know that uh, seven is congruent to eight because those are vertical angles. So now what we can see, it's starting to come together uh, for us. We can see that five is equal to six, six is equal to seven, seven is equal to eight. Why would five be equal to eight? Well, that's the transitive property. So you can think of the transitive property kind of like a train, like they're all connected together like the cars of a train. But essentially, uh, if five is equal to six and six is equal to seven and seven is equal to eight, they're all equal to each other. So the first will naturally be equal to the last. So I think we have a good framework now. So then I would go over here to the two columns, look at the statements and reasons, and I would you know, hash it out. So basically, step number one, I always like to write the givens first. Uh, not everyone uh, writes the givens first. As a matter of fact, you know what, maybe in this proof we won't, uh, we won't do it uh, first, okay? A lot of times I just like to do it and write it and get it out of the way, so don't forget about it. And uh, you know, it just gets me going with the proof. And then whenever you're trying to prove, you always wanna make that the last step, okay? And then you wanna fill in the in-between steps that gets you from the beginning to the end, you know, sequentially. So I think for the first step, let's just say that uh, angle five, okay, is congruent to angle six. And the reason for that would be vertical angle theorem. So I'm just abbreviating here, but you can write it out, vertical angle theorem. And then let's go to step number two, we know that six is congruent to seven, so we're gonna say angle six is congruent to angle seven, and the reason for that was that it was given. So I'm just gonna write given. Okay, so are you with me so far? Step number three, we know that seven is congruent to eight, angle seven is congruent to angle eight, and again, that's the vertical angle theorem. Okay, vertical angle theorem. And then the last step, number four, is what we talked about at the very beginning about uh, using the transitive property of five is equal to six and six is equal to seven and seven is equal to eight, five will be equal to eight, okay? And that's what we were trying to prove. That's our last step. And the reason again was the transitive property, transitive property. And that's it, so this is a beginning proof. Uh, I hope this helped you to understand a little bit how to work through the proof, some of the hints and uh, keys that I gave you there. Check out some of the other uh, geometry proofs that I'm gonna have on my Mario's Math Tutor and YouTube channel, and subscribe to the channel. Um, take a look at some of those videos, and I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.